Our favorite thing about anthropology is about these really interesting primates that could give us some evidence about the social side of human evolution. For years, anthropologists have studied the human evolutionary past, discovering things like their origin, the climate they lived in, the age of the earliest hominin species, and some of the tools they used. But we still do not know how our human ancestors behaved, so we look at living non-human primates to make analogies. Bonobos, a non-human primate, tend to be the most similar to human beings. Bonobos can be a good analogy to represent how our ancestors behaved, and if we look at bonobos, we can see a lot of similarities. Bonobos can bipedally walk for long distances, just like humans can. Not only can they walk upright like humans, but they can pick up things with their hands because like us humans, bonobos have opposable thumbs. Bonobos and humans have similar structural capabilities, but they can also be seen to have cultural aspects that can be learned, symbolic, and adaptive. For those who do not know, culture is the primary means of adaptation. One way bonobos exhibit culture is the way they learn new things. Like human children, bonobos learn by watching. An example of learned human and bonobo culture can be seen in the way they both learn to play instruments through observation. Without seeing how an instrument is used, neither human nor bonobo would know what to do with the instrument. Through examination techniques, we can see that bonobos can learn to recreate what they have seen and heard, thus showing us how our ancestors would learn new things. Both human and bonobos exhibit verbal and nonverbal symbols that stand for something else. People tend to believe that only humans have a specialized language, but in reality, bonobos can communicate with each other through symbols, sex, and sounds. Here you see Kanzi, a well-known bonobo working with a human using a lexigram. A lexigram is a symbol that corresponds to an object or idea. Primatologists use lexigram boards to communicate with non-human primates. Our ancestors, like bonobos, had to agree on a method of communicating that evolved into today's modern language. One could argue that the early human markings seen here on a cave wall are very similar to lexigram symbols. The term lexigram was coined in 1971, and this artificial language is called Yurkish. The next video clip shows how Kanzi uses the lexigram to communicate. So how does this lexigram thing work? We talk to Kanzi with this. Kanzi, come here. Come here. Can you say Matata? Matata. Matata. Matata is Kanzi's mother. All I have to say is the word, and Kanzi can find it. Can you show me ball? Ball. Oh, that's right. Sh show me egg. 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 That's right. Show me chow. 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 That's right. Dr. Sue, how many words does Kanzi know? We just guess he knows several thousand. On his keyboard, there are about 450 that, that he can understand. The number that he uses on a daily basis is... Maybe 30 or 40. You just saw how the bonobo showed learned culture through the use of instruments and symbolic culture through the use of lexigrams. Now all that is left is adaptive culture through the use of tools. The tools used by the bonobos can be a good indicator of the human evolutionary past. The Australopithecus garhai are known to use the same core and flake technology as the bonobos. This behavior is adaptive because it helped both the bonobos and the Australopithecus garhai thrive in their environment. We know that our ancestors had these same Oldowan tools, but now we can see how they were used by observing the living bonobos using them for things like food. Being a bit of a video game nerd, I was immediately fascinated when watching a video of a bonobo playing Pac-Man. People have always said how humans and non-human primates like bonobos are related, but I didn't see much of a resemblance in them to myself. But watching them behave in a way that seemed so strikingly human, I was intrigued. After taking the time to learn about behaviors bonobos exhibit and how that can be an implication of how our past ancestors could have behaved, I was interested in the connection. We know all of the things about the first Homo sapiens, except their behavior, and using the bonobos as a frame of reference really put things into perspective. Not only do they give us a glimpse into the past, they are also just really cool primates. Okay, get the monsters. Get them. And take the cherries too.
Now watch out, stay away from them now. Now you can chase them again. Time to this perspective speaks to me because I never knew the capabilities of the bonobos and how they can learn to do the same things humans can. Since the bonobos are the closest primate to a human, we can compare the capabilities of our ancestors to these bonobos and possibly make a connection between the behavior of the present bonobo and the behavior of human ancestors. From studying bonobos, I have found that they can take simple directions and complete a task, such as starting a fire. And he really enjoys it. He's figured out how to use lighters and matches uh, uh, a lighter properly. Put it on the fire. I was amazed that the bonobos could understand directions from humans so easily and know what fires could be used for, such as roasting marshmallows. Not only could a bonobo construct a fire, I saw that the bonobo could actually light the fire with a lighter. So many connections and possibilities of human ancestors' behaviors have gone unnoticed to the human population. Studying bonobos might be the answer to the question, how did our ancestors behave? And I think the bonobos represent a very good ideal of the possibilities.